All right, we're back. We're doing string two problems. The whole idea, the whole niche behind string two problems is that you need a loop in order to solve them, and this one is no different. I'm looking at x, y, z there. It says return true if the given string contains an appearance of x, y, z, where the x, y, z is not directly preceded by a period. So x, x, y, z counts. There is an x, y, z in the thing in front of it. It's not a period, but x, y, z this one does not count because there is a period preceding it, right? So here we have XYZ, the character in front of it is a C, that's good. We have XYZ, the character in front of it is a period, that's bad. We have XYZ, and there is no character in front of it, so that's good. Okay, um, this one's going to be a little tricky, um, and I'll show you just a quick and easy way to do that one. But um, we Basically, the moment that we we find our situation, we can just return a true or false value. So there's no variables to create in advance, right? Uh, we've seen problems where I've needed to make an empty string because we were returning a string. We've seen problems where I've had to create integers, counter variables, uh, to keep track of occurrences. And we don't need to do that either because we're returning a Boolean, not an integer. So I'm actually ready to start looping. I'm going to create my for loop. And again, I like to start standard. I'm gonna go ahead and make an adjustment here, however. This little special case is potentially a problem because my whole idea is that I'm going to cut a three character substring and ask, is it equal to X, Y, Z? I'm then going to check the character in front of it. Notice that's a problem. That's only a problem when we are at index zero. So instead of doing this loop, starting at index zero, I'm gonna start at index one. I basically wanna create my strategy so that it handles 95% of cases, almost all of them. Okay, and then we'll just handle this one separately. I'll show you something cheeky that you can do. So, I'm going to start at index one, meaning we're starting here. I still wanna cut a three character substring. I'm gonna, create my variable three and it is a substring starting at i going to i plus three what i want to know is does that equal xyz if that three character substring is equal to xyz that's part of it right we basically have a hit we basically want to return true because we have found xyz however there's a little bit of qualifier in here it cannot directly be preceded by a period. So I basically want to get the character that is in front of it. Right? Keep in mind that when I'm cutting this three character substring, I is at index one. Right? When I'm cutting this three character substring, I is at index one. I is at index one. So what is this spot in relation to I? It's one less. I want to get the character at that index. So if we found X, Y, Z and the character preceding it, that is str char at, I minus one, um, you could consider turning this into a variable. I would leave maybe a comment here. This is the proceeding, preceding. So I'm getting a three character substring. I'm getting the preceding character. I'm gonna ask, is that three character substring equal to X, Y, Z and is the preceding character not equal to a period? Notice that I'm using equals to compare these two strings. Notice that I'm using the not equals relational operator to compare these two characters, right? Double quotes, that's a string literal. Single quotes, that's a char literal. I'm comparing character to character. So if I find X, Y, Z and the preceding character is not a period, we return true. We found it. If I manage to go through the entire string, and this never happens, we're going to return false. Now, we're going to have problems. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot more red in there than what I want. One that should be obvious from what we've been doing is I'm looking at three character substrings. That's okay when we are got three characters left. When there's only two characters left, it's a problem. So I need to stop a little bit early. The way that we've been doing that, the best way to handle it, in my opinion, the easiest change that you can make is just stopping your loop early. All right? I'm gonna hit go. We're gonna get a lot more green, and we only have these two these two test cases uh, that are incorrect. Let's take a look at what's going on there. Here's 
the value coming in here. Here's the value that's coming in here. What is true about both of those? Well, the X, Y, Z is at the very beginning, right? That is the kind of special case that we're not handling. Our loop handles everything else, right? We're starting at index one. We're cutting a three character substring. We're getting the preceding character and finding our matches. So these are the only ones that I'm getting wrong. It's when X, Y, Z is at the beginning. There is a quick and easy way we can check to see is X, Y, Z at the beginning. Here's the list of string stuff that we know so far. A method that we've learned, haven't really used a ton of, index of. I can use index of to quickly look through a string for a string, and it's going to give me back the index at which that occurs. Right? I'll get a negative one if it's not there. Otherwise, I'm going to get a number zero or greater if it is there. Notice that I said zero. Zero is a possibility. If I looked through this string for x, y, z, it would be successful. We would find it. It would be at index zero. So same thing here. If I look through this string for x, y, z, we would find it. Index of would give us back a zero. So that is the special case here. I'm just going to put in a very simple if statement before I start looping. If str index of x, y, z is equal to exactly zero. I'm going to search through str for x, y, z. And if I get back exactly a zero, that means we found it and it's at the very beginning. I'm going to stop. I'm going to piece out of the method. I'm going to return true. So if this happens, we return true and do none of this. That's good because it, you know, I don't have to worry about testing for it. I'm going to hit the go button. And you see we get it all correct. Now, this is technically, from a, a true processing standpoint, not the most efficient approach. Kinda. The only reason I say that is that, yeah, this looks like it's just a simple method call, right? You, we're not really having to do much work here. This does all the work for us. But keep in mind, this is calling a section of code that is written somewhere else. And it's using a loop. So this is doing a loop all by itself. And then we proceed to do a loop, right? So basically for every string, I'm actually kind of looping twice. I do it with index of, I do it here. And that's inefficient because another route that you could go is basically test for this inside of your single loop, which would be more efficient. That being said, I'm not going to do that. The, the amount of efficiency we're talking about here is not a big deal. This is clever. And I would actually prefer to show you this than to try to write in um, so that this handles that. Um, you should note that the variables are not necessary because we only end up using them here and here, but they arguably make it cleaner because you would have to do this and you would have to do this in order to get rid of the variables. But by doing so, we could get rid of braces and you end up with a solution that looks like this. Not the most readable, but it obviously works, right? I'm taking this string and asking, does that string equal X, Y, Z? I'm taking this character and asking, is that character not equal to a period? Let's go to the next one. Uh, Bob there, this one feels an awful lot like the code problem that we did before. It says, return true. Okay, well, this is awesome. Instead of counting, we just return a true or false value. Return true if the given string contains Bob but where the O can be any char, right? So this one has Bob. It obviously has Bob there, but what's actually triggering our return value is this right here, where we have B, some character, B. This one is true because we got B, some character, B. All right, I'm going to, um, because we don't have to count, because we don't have to return a string, I'm going to immediately start looping we're ultimately just returning a true or false value. Again, I like to start with my standard loop and then come back and make changes as we need to. We're going to go out of bounds. Okay, so I'm getting only single characters, right? I'm getting this character and then I'm getting this character. 
It's not a three character substring, right? We're not actually looking at three characters at a time. We only care about one character, one character. Okay, so as we're looping, uh, let's pull this one in. I is gonna start at index one. And I am basically looking for B something B. So we're gonna be looking at this character and we're gonna be looking at this character. I would like to know what is this character in relation to I? Well, it's exactly equal. What is this character in relation to I? Well, when I is zero, this is index two, it's two characters away. So I'm gonna get our first character using char at. You can use substring, but I'm gonna get the one at index I. I'm also gonna get the one at index I plus two. If this character is a B and this character is a B, I have found our string, right? Notice that I'm actually skipping the character at I plus one. We're skipping this character. If CH1 is equal to a B and CH2 is equal to a B, keep in mind, these are characters. I'm comparing character to character using the equals relational operator and the same thing over here. I need both of these things to be true, but if they are, we can return true. Otherwise, I return false. So we're looping, we're looping, we're looping. The moment that I meet my condition, we return true and we peace out. We leave the entire method, not just the loop, the entire method, we leave it. Okay, so I basically am looking for it, and the moment that I find it, I stop looking. I found it. If I manage to go through the entire string and we're still here, we never hit this return statement, that means we didn't find it, so we return a false value. I'm going to hit my go button. You see our index out of bounds. We are getting some right, some wrong, looking like a Christmas tree over here. It's because we're getting an index out of bounds. I'm okay when there's three characters left. I'm not okay when there's only two characters left. I need to stop a little bit earlier. I'm gonna throw in a minus two and that'll fix my index out of bounds. And you see we're getting them all correct. Um, not a lot of ways to improve this one. You could get rid of the variables. By getting rid of the variables, you can get rid of the braces. Even though it looks like there are two statements inside this for loop, there's only one. This is not in the for loop, it's in the if statement. This if statement is in the for loop, and that is the only statement that is there. So I'm going to hit the go, and you see that we're still getting them all correct. Oh, this is this is how I would solve this one. Nothing to add. Let's go to the next one. X, Y balance. All right, this one is super confusing, and I'm going to cheat a little bit. We'll say that a string is X, Y balance if for all the X chars in the string, there exists a Y char somewhere later in the string. So X, X, Y is balanced, but X, Y, X is not. One Y can balance multiple X's. Return true if the given string is X, Y balanced. What this is saying is if you have an X, there needs to be a Y later. If you have any number of X's, there should be a Y later. Um, I might even hit this go button to see if we can, um, hold on, watch this. Return false. <laughs> All right, let's get some more test cases over here because what what's shown is not great, right? This one is balanced. There's an X, but there's a Y later. This one is not balanced because there's an X and there's no Y after it. This one is not balanced because while there is a Y, it doesn't appear after the X. Okay. So, but what they don't show you is that, you know, this one is balanced. We see a true value is what's expected. Even though there's multiple X's, the Y comes later. That's why it's balanced. This one is balanced because there are no X's at all. Okay, so it, it gets tricky. Now, um, this is supposed to be done with a loop. It is a mess with a loop. It's not how we do it. Is now we're going to do it. I'm going to cheat a little bit. In some ways, what I care about is the index at which these elements occur. Right? That should be screaming index of to you. We care about the index. We care about where the stuff occurs. 
the problem is if I use index of on, let's say, let's take a look at this one. If I use index of on X, I'm going to get this one. Okay. If I use index of on X, I'm going to get this one. Why is that a problem? Because like I can use index of to get the X, I can use index of to get the Y, but I'm going to get these two and it's going to seem like the X comes before the Y based on those index of values. That's sneaky because there's an X that comes a little bit later. So I care about the index, but not from this direction. I actually care about the last index, right? I accidentally showed you last index of as a, um, as a potential method. It functions the exact same way as index of. In fact, we'll tack it on here. Last index of takes in a string, returns an int. Last index of can take in also a char and return an int. It is the same thing. Except instead of doing its search from the left hand side, it's going to do the search from the right hand side. We're going to find the last occurrence instead of the first. That is a big deal for this particular test case. Why? If I do index of looking for X, I'm going to get this one. If I do last index of, I'm going to get this one. If I do index of on Y, I'm going to get this. If I do last index of on Y, I'm going to get this. So last index of searches from this end, finding the last occurrence. Let's get those positions. I'm going to create an integer X, which actually represents the index at which X occurs. We're going to look through STR look, using last index of searching for X. You can do X as a char. You can do X as a string. Doesn't matter. This method is overloaded. Uh, I like doing a char when it is in fact a char. I'm going to look for Y. Again, this is the last index at which these two things occur. I'm saving them into variables, right? So when I refer to X, it is in particular the last index at which X occurred. I am okay as long as this index is greater than this one, right? So let's take this as an example. If I do last index of, we're going to start our search from the right hand side going this way. We would find this index, that's index two. So on this example, that would have a value of two. If I search for Y, that is index five. And this is a true case. Why? Well, simply put, Y is greater than X. Okay, here, I'm going to search for X. I would get the exact same index two. I would search for Y, I would get a negative one. That's a problem <laughs> because my X is greater than my Y. Here, if I do last index of, I'll get a zero for Y, that one's easy, and I would get a three for X. That's a problem because my Y, again, is smaller than my X. So this actually makes this stupid easy. I'm going to return Y greater than X. If this is true, I'm going to get a true value, and that is what I'm looking for. If this is false, I'm going to get a false value. I'm going to hit go, and we'll talk about a couple of issues. Man, that's a lot of correct, correct solutions there, correct test cases. This one's a problem, and this one's a problem. Okay, let's talk about this. So what happens whenever my string is BBB. Okay. I'm going to look for X. I don't find it. So I get a negative one. I'm going to look for a Y. I don't find it. So I get a negative one. These values are the same. So that's a problem. But note that when they are both negative one, we're actually okay. That's a true value. I don't have any X's, so we don't need to balance it with a Y. The exact same thing is happening here. If I have an empty string, I'm going to look for X, get a negative one. I'm going to look for a Y, get a negative one. This is the only time where these values are the same and I actually want a true value. So simply put, if X is equal to Y, that's okay. I'm going to return true.
and there is our correct solution. This this feels like cheating. You don't want to see the loop solution. Um, and if you don't get to this, I'm okay. All right, last index of is something that I, I threw in. This problem is a problem. Let's go to the next one. Mix string, given two strings, A and B, create a bigger string made of the first char from A, the first char from B, the second char of A, the second char of B, and so on. Any leftover chars go to the end of the result. Ooh, this part. Okay, so it is possible for our strings to be of different lengths, right? This is kind of the first problem that we're seeing in the string two section that is giving us two strings, A and B. I ultimately need to return a string. I'm looking at this and right away I know that I'm going to create some type of empty string that I'm going to end up adding to. I'm going to basically, I want to, <laughs> this is, ooh, this is rough. Okay, so I want to almost ignore this part. All right, I almost want to assume that they have the same lengths. We're going to have problems whenever they have different lengths, but right for let's let's take a look at the the majority of what we should be doing. I'm going to be taking this first character, adding it onto RTN. I'm going to be taking this first character, add it onto RTN. I'm going to take this one, add it to RTN. I'm going to take this one and add it to RTN. So that is the mixed string thing that is that is coming into it. If the strings had the same length, I could just easily say, as long as I is less than one of them, assuming they have the same length, and we would be okay. This is obviously a problem, not necessarily here, but if A had a little bit of a longer length, right? Uh, let's switch this to B just for a moment, and we'll see exactly why this is a problem. Well, the length of this string is 2. The length of this string is 5. I'm going to end up pulling characters from A, right? I'm going to take the character from A at the current index. I'm going to take the character from B at the current index. This is a problem whenever they have different lengths, because I could potentially get an index out of bounds, right? In this example, A is shorter, but I'm basing my loop on B. Okay, one idea is we'll just loop through like all of A and then loop through all of B, but we're having to mix them, so that's not the case. What I recommend is let's find out which one is shorter. Okay, so... I'm going to create a string. I want to call it short. This is a reserved word. So I'm going to go with show. And let's assume that A is the shortest. I'm going to create a string. I want it to be the longer string. That's also a reserved word. So let's call it long. And I'm going to make that B. I am assuming that A is the shorter, B is the longer. However, we're going to do a quick if statement check. If... A dot length is actually greater than B dot length. Then we're going to swap these things because as it turns out, the shorter string is B. The longer string is A. So when I reach this point, the shortest string is stored here. The longest string is stored here. I'm going to loop through the shorter string. I'm going to use the shorter string uh, to basically restrict my loop. Why? Because we know it's the shorter of the two, and so we're guaranteed to have the corresponding indices for the other string. Now, I'm going to use a while loop. And that's ultimately because we're going to deal with these leftover characters at some point. So, I'm basically making a while loop. This is <laughs> this is basically identical. Uh, as long as i is less than show.length. This is basically our standard for loop, just presented as a while loop. Ultimately, the whole reason I'm doing this is I'm going to want this index 
after the fact. I want to know where we stopped in order to get the remaining leftover characters. If I used a for loop, right? If I did the corresponding for loop, this while loop, this for loop are functionally the exact same thing with the only exception being after this for loop is over, I doesn't exist. After this while loop is over, I still exist because it was declared before. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the for loop. I ultimately want to know where did we stop? Because where we stopped is where I'm going to pick up in the longer string. Okay, so we're going to start at index zero. While we're less than the shorter length, this is where we're going to end up mixing our characters. I technically don't need this return string until down here, so I'm actually going to move it down. No real reason. It just makes sense. Okay. So with each iteration, what I want to do is pull the current character from A. Then get the current character from B. And I'm adding those to RTN. RTN is going to update with each iteration. It's going to be what it currently is, plus the current character from A. That is A dot char at I. I also want to add to it the current character from B. That is B dot char at I. Okay. So it's interesting because I'm dealing with shortest and longest. And even here I'm basing it off shortest dot length. But I'm pulling the characters from A and B. And the reason I'm doing that instead of pulling it from short and long is because the order here, they actually care in our output. Right? The order is the one from A, then the one from B, the one from A, the one from B, the one from A, the one from B. So that's why I'm doing that here. And shortest and longest is not necessarily AB. It started out as AB, but it could have swapped. So to keep it consistent with the output that they want, I'm pulling from A, I'm pulling from B. Um, after our loop is over, RTN is going to be basically a mix of all of the letters. So I'm going to return RTN. We'll get a lot of our test cases, right? <laughs> I wouldn't say a lot. Um, but notice just here we got the same lengths, right? ABC, XYZ, and we have the mix going on. We're okay. Let's take a look at another one we got right. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, this one's just A and B. We mix those properly. So the ones that we're getting wrong, the mix is happening pretty well, right? This is the letter from A. This is the letter from B. This is the letter from A. This is the letter from B. The only thing that we're missing is the leftover chars, right? In this case, B is longer. These three need to be tacked on to the end. Okay, so let's think about this. The whole reason I used a while loop instead of a for loop is that the moment that I stopped, I need, I need to know. I need to know where I stopped. Let's actually maybe trace it using high and there. Right. So let's say that A is high. Let's say that B is there. I'm going to assume that A is the shortest and that B is the longest. I'm going to ask, is A actually longer than B? This is false, so we skip this. What this means is that this is still intact. Our shortest is A, our longest is B. Okay, we create our return string. It's got nothing in it. We create I. It's at index zero. I'm going to ask, is I is zero less than the shortest dot length? Shortest was this one. That has a length of two. That's true. Okay, I'm going to update RTN. It's going to be what it currently is, which is nothing, plus what it, um, the current character from A, right? I is at zero. So the current character from A is an H. So we're going to tack on an H. We're going to get the current character from B. I is still a zero. That's this T. Looking good. We'll do an I plus plus. I is now one. We're going to ask, is one less than shortest dot length? It is. 
we're going to update RTN. It's going to be what it currently is, which is just HT, plus the current character from I, from A. I is currently a one, so we're going to get the element at index one, which happens to be an I. We'll tack that on. We're going to get the current character from B. Again, I is one. So we get the character from index one, that's an H. We do an I plus plus, I is now two. We're gonna ask is two less than two? That's false. We would exit the loop, notice that I still exist, right? This is what I have so far in RTN. In I at this point is a two. Right, that was the last thing it was whenever our loop ended. Okay, why is that important? This is effectively where I stopped. I need these three characters. That's what I need to ultimately tack on. In theory, in this example, it's coming from B, right? So in theory, I'm pulling those three characters from B. But in practice, it's always the longest string. We looped through based on the shortest string to get the majority of our stuff. The remaining characters are always going to be coming from the longest string. How do I know where to get those characters? This bad boy right here. All right. So I want to take my longest string and I want to get the remaining characters multiple. So it's a substring. I want to start at index I. Okay. In this example, my longest is B. So we're going to go into the string. We're going to start here at index two and go through the rest of the string. That's what this is, right? This currently has a value of ERE. I'm going to add that to my return string. RTN is going to be what it currently is plus those remaining characters. And we do this right before we return it. I'm going to hit my go button. And you see we got them all right. I'm going to maybe take out some comments. Here's our strategy. A and B can be of different lengths. We're going to figure out what is the shortest, what is the longest. Whatever the shortest is, it's stored in SHO whenever we hit this point. Whatever the longest is, it's stored in LON at this point. I created an empty string. We're going to loop through effectively both strings using the shortest length to keep us in bounds. I mix those up. I mix up the characters from both strings using A and B instead of shortest and longest because they care about the order. They want A, B, A, B. After it's over, I have mixed up the characters from the shortest string and a large portion of the longest string. The longest string still has some characters left over, so I'm gonna get the remaining characters and add those to RTN right before I return. Uh, one way that we could reduce some lines is I could technically just do this at the point of return. Right, this is actually gonna make a new string and that new string is what gets returned. Um, this looks like I can do a plus equals. We're going to see this actually kind of, uh, breaks the code a little bit. <laughs> There's some numbers in there. Uh, I'm going to briefly talk about why this is going on. This could have happened on a, a, the double char one that we did in our previous video. So in Java, really a lot of the programming languages, Chars can actually be thought of as integers. In fact, if we go to the string API, uh, what I'm telling you right now is way more than you need to know, by the way. If I could actually go look at index of, for instance, the API is telling me it takes in an integer. Your teacher has been telling you it takes in a char. All right, here's the string version, so that's not the one I'm referring to. But this version, I've been telling you it takes in a char, here it's saying it's an integer, but they are referring to it as ch. These characters have an associated integer value with them, right? It's based on an ASCII table. What is ASCII? Images is a risky click. So basically, uh, I actually want maybe something like this. So each character 
actually has an associated value, right? Like this H, for instance, is a 48. Lowercase h is a 68, okay? The reason that a, is a thing is you can basically take characters and perform math on them to turn them into other characters, right? If I had a capital H and I added 20 to it, it becomes a lowercase h. That's a thing. That's a thing that you can do. Now, that's only a problem when I use the shorthand assignment operator because, again, think about this. This is returning, this is supposed to be returning chars. It's actually returning integers. I'm taking those integers and adding them together. And then, so this was previously this. Why is, it's not a problem here, right? Why is it not a problem? I'm taking the string. I'm adding to it an integer, a character. This is going to turn this into a string. I'm then taking that string. And I'm adding it to this integer, this character. That's going to turn it into a string. I'm then saying our string is equal to that. And you can save a string into a string. So that works. Okay. Whenever I use the shorthand assignment operator, it drops precedence on this addition. This is now tied together. All of the equals relational operators have the lowest precedence, period. That's by design as well. You want that to happen. You want equals. You want the last thing to be saving the value in. You want to perform all of your calculations first before you save the value in. So by associating this addition with this equals, it drops the precedence. That now means this has highest precedence. That now means we're doing the math on the right-hand side first, then adding it to RTN. Now, you can get around this by using substring here. All right, if we use substring, we can use the shorthand assignment operator. Or you can just do this. Now, everything I just told you was like way too much information. You don't need to know that. I'm not going to test you on the fact that chars are technically integers. But that's the gist of it. All right, that's going to be a good spot to pause. This is the solution I ultimately kind of recommend. I'll see you in the next one.